Poppin is betting on events are never gonna be the same. We're returning to in-person, but we're not returning to the pre-pandemic past. And it's exciting. And I think that while we can't wait to be gathering in person more frequently and that being the new way forward, events will never be the same. They're forever changed, which is also just really exciting to be in the industry right now. Welcome to Marketing Trends. I'm your host as always, Jeremy Bergeron. And today we welcome Brianna Haig, the Director of Demand Generation for the events platform, Hopin. Brianna, who has held positions at companies like Yelp and Eventbrite, proposes that technology is really creating new possibilities for events. Stay right here to learn from Brianna as she shares how you can make hybrid, virtual, in-person events more engaging and more accessible than ever before. And before we get into the podcast, I wanna give a special nod to our partners at Salesforce. Salesforce brings marketing and engagement together. If you wanna learn more, head over to salesforce.com forward slash marketing. Now let's get into this cool conversation. Brianna, so good connect. Your name and company was on the road, like it was on the calendar for a while. I think we moved it and then we we locked it in and we maybe moved it again. And but anyway, <laughs> we made it today. We made it. <laughs> um, and you said you're at a conference today. What conference are you at? Yeah, it's actually BizBash Biz Bash Connect in Puerto okay. Rico. Ooh. So events are happening in person, online. There's the hybrid format people are going with, and I'm I'm on site at the at the conference for the leadership summit that they planned. Wow! How many people are attending that? So there's 1,200 people for the conference, and then we have okay. a smaller group of about 20 that are a part of the leadership summit. Wow! So you're in Puerto Rico. Did I get that right? So yeah. you're you're it's really having having a tough time, I'm sure, being near the beach and the water out there. Yeah, we are we are inside at a conference um venue at a convention center, but um yeah, it, it looks great from <laughs> the hotel room window. <laughs> is is Hoppin is Hoppin supporting the conference at all or are you just attending it to to meet new folks or Yeah, not this one. Um but it's okay. an industry conference with a lot of our clients. We just I just met a few people that have used Hoppin for a variety of their events and it's it's great to to meet in person because you have so many relationships that you build, um, you know, via email and video calls and um, any opportunity to meet in person is always really nice. Oh, I love it. That's awesome. And it looks like your your background, you got into the event, like you go deep in the event game. You have a lot of experience. Was Eventbrite the first one after Yelp? Kind of that yeah. was the, the intro? Okay. Yeah. So I first moved to San Francisco for a job at Yelp on the sales team. And I think that it is very interesting, especially being in a marketing function that works closely with the sales team to have that background and foundation. But when I moved to Eventbrite, that was when I first joined a marketing team. And what was interesting was my role at Eventbrite, we planned our own events for Eventbrite, but we had an audience of event organizers as our users that we were marketing to. And so I went to a few other industries in between, but it's kind of nice at Hopin to be back in the event industry and back with an audience of customers and partners that plan really incredible experiences and bring people together in really creative ways. That's awesome. And you're coming up on almost two years there now, I think, right? Yeah. Just over your, over your year. Yeah. Yeah. About a little over a year and a half. Um, I joined Hopin in October of 2020 and I was the third person on the marketing team. And now we have over 40 on the marketing in the marketing wow. department. So you've been a part of some growth. Yeah, it's been, it's been a wild ride, but but very exciting. <laughs> cool. To me, you have this perspective in the event space that's really interesting. You have this technology play. The world has changed and shifted quite a bit when it comes to events. Many of our customers and certainly a lot of our guests that come on the show are really bullish on events this year. What are you kind of most excited about? What are you most excited to kind of get into in terms of the world that you're in now? You've seen certainly a lot in the past year and change. But what, what, what's, yeah, what's most exciting to you right now? I think it's such an exciting time for events because of the technology and all of the creativity people have had to employ over the last couple of years. I mean, we saw so many really interesting products and pivots and, you know, there was really just an acceleration of a trend that was starting to gain a little bit of traction previously. Um, you know, virtual events were happening, but not not to the degree, obviously, that they are now. And so you, people have really come to the table with some really incredible experiences that they've been able to create. And I think what's so interesting is now that we have the technology, we have all of these different options of how we engage with our audiences and the communities that they exist within, there's so many different ways that we can do it. And every single event, you know, you want to think about what is 
um, the format that makes most sense for this particular audience. And that might look completely different from another experience that you're creating. But we have so many tools and so many options available to us. I just always think it's so interesting and exciting um, when any event organizer you know, is thinking about the experience that they want to put together, making that decision and deciding, you know, is this going to be virtual? Is this going to be in person? Is this going to be a hybrid experience? There's a lot of different avenues that you can take and so many mediums that can get you there. And it's just really, it's really cool to see all of the creative things that people are doing. That's awesome. I mean, you get a, you get a front row seat into anyone that's certainly using your platform, but seeing some, what are some of the creative things people are doing? I think that's exciting. What's kind of table stakes now for, you know, for those chief marketing officers and marketing leaders that listen to this show, many of them in the Fortune 500. What are some things that exist that have to be there now in terms of putting on a good event, maybe regardless of size, but are the things that, that have like become front and center more now? And if so, what are they? Yeah, I think that something that always comes up is engagement. And I think that it's really interesting all of the ways that you can engage through an online format that people just weren't really even aware of or didn't consider as a part of their strategy previously. And the way that you engage with your audience online is obviously very, very different than the way that you would engage with someone in person. But there's just a lot of um, a lot of really amazing experiences that a marketing team can put together that drive results and impact for the company. And thinking about um, you know your content and the you know ways that the audience can engage with speakers or engage with each other through you know maybe facilitated networking there's a lot of really interesting things that you can do versus i think what the you know online events of the past where maybe you were just live streaming something and something was getting live streamed from your event to an online audience you didn't really think about you know what's that attendee experience like and thinking about that i think is super important um, and marketing teams are, you know, obsessing over the data that they now have from the attendee experience for an online event in a way that, you know, people didn't really think about before. I think before we were familiar with webinars, and that was definitely something that was, um, you know, a tactic that a demand gen team would employ to drive leads and pipeline. There's so much more than webinars in terms of all of the different types of experiences and events that you can create online. And you can use data to inform you know, decisions that you make and priorities that you decide to prioritize based off of what an attendee experience looks like online. You can see you know, what session did they spend their time in and where did they go in the expo hall or did they not go to the expo hall? How much time did they spend networking? That can help you inform future events and you know, really be strategic about what's landing with your audience, what's resonating, and you have that data in a way that you, know, you may not have at an in-person event because you don't have that same level of kind of attendee information that's, that's given to you immediately. What about post event in, in terms of engagement? We we just attended a conference here in Austin two weeks ago, the Forrester B2B big conference here in Austin. It was a yeah. fantastic event. Shout out to Forrester. And in their app, you know, all the attendees, there was some level of connection and engagement, of course, like who's speaking and where and when and the details and logistics. And it was a pretty well well done app. But then after the event's over, right? It's like now. How do, how do we continue to foster some of those connections and, and how can technology support that? So much of our favorite people in one place and now time is, is moving on and we're kind of shifting in priorities. What are you seeing that's working well in terms of post-event engagement and things that maybe tech is supporting in that way? Yeah, I think that as marketers, you always think about how can I continue to drive the return on the experience that I created. And I had heard, I had heard a few people that attended that same conference that said great things. And you know, you have this amazing moment and then um, you know, after the fact, you want to leverage your content well after. I think that one thing that we always, um, that we do ourselves as a marketing team, but then also we see our customers, you know, put together this really great content. Attendees have a great experience. How do you help your content work for you after the event? So that could be, you know, taking some of the really great key takeaways and insights that you had from a panel discussion or learnings on the trade show floor, putting that into a blog post or social media campaign with some of the snippets. Um, we always try to repurpose, remix, and refresh all of our content and, you know, find, finding opportunities for maybe something that you did for a presentation or it was, you know, at your trade show booth or it was part of a panel conversation, getting that into some sort of, you know, guide or something that you can follow up with attendees, posting on social, giving them something to um, take away after the fact and reminding them of the really great experience that they had. Um, in terms of you know attendee networking and continuing those relationships after, I think it's it is really interesting. I mean, obviously, when you meet people in person, you can connect on LinkedIn, and that's one way to you know continue those relationships beyond the the event itself. But something that I think is really cool that 
event organizers are doing is giving people the opportunity to network online after they meet in person. So you make those relationships. Maybe you met someone you know, at the water cooler, getting coffee during one of the breaks in the conference halls, having that opportunity to engage with them virtually. Because maybe you, maybe you travel to Austin, maybe you know, someone um, you know, lives across the world, but you had connected with them. And then you know, having that opportunity to engage online post-event, I think is really interesting too. And do you want to do that within an app or within some sort of a, a web application? What's the best way to do that? I mean, our platform has a speed networking area. And so we have found organizers either with their hybrid event, with the virtual audience that's attending, or you know, if they have an in-person event and then they do a virtual follow-on event, they'll use our networking area for speed networking. And something that I love about it is you can set the amount of time so let's say it's 90 seconds where you get matched up with people at random something that i think is really interesting is when you do smart matchmaking and as an organizer you can say let's say you're a recruiter at a career fair only that you know job applicants are going to meet with the uh, companies or you know, head up a talent acquisition department at your company it's people that are in these roles are going to meet with people that are applying for those specific departments that's always interesting because then you can really be intentional about who's meeting who in a way that maybe you wouldn't even if you were in person and you were trying to facilitate conversations that were happening um, in person. So I think I, I think that the networking features that we have and that I know a lot of other platforms have as well can be really useful tools to, to create uh, connections. That feature did not exist in the app that we had. They need your help for next year, for sure. I would have <laughs> we'll loved I would have loved the speed. Yeah, I would have loved the speed networking function because we to your point, we met so many cool people at the water cooler over lunch and, and and we could get some connection and some, you know, make some connections there, but there was still not as much opportunity. So an actual feature where you're like, hey, go here, spend some time, get to know people and then find some meaningful connections is great. So on that note, you know, for our audience, Brianna, just describe Hopin and, and, and really what you do there and then break down how Hopin's platform really helps businesses put on these amazing events. Yeah, definitely. So we're really dedicated to building an impactful platform that helps people create shared experiences and connections. And the, our kind of um, purpose right now is just making the world feel closer. And our company was derived off of Johnny Bufferat. He's our CEO and founder. He created Hopin in 2019 because um, he was looking for a platform that was able to bring people together in a meaningful way and have that in-person like um, type opportunity to connect in a way that he couldn't he couldn't find anything online. And so great product market fit, obviously, in the year that was 2020. But really, our purpose is giving people the opportunity to bring their communities together in a meaningful way, whatever, whatever you know, type of event they choose to do. So we became pretty synonymous with the term virtual events. Um, as a result of you know, our product at the time, and then also the demand that existed for a virtual event platform. We've since then had multiple rounds of funding that have given us the opportunity to build something that extends well beyond virtual. And we acquired a number of companies um, in 2021 that have given us this multi-product offering that now enables event organizers and maybe not event organizers, maybe just people that are looking to connect with their communities and bring people together to choose from a suite of products based off of what their specific needs are. And it's interesting because now people are returning to in-person experiences. Some are choosing to do a hybrid format where you have in-person paired with something that's online. Um, and we now have technology that supports all of that. And we actually just did a, a six city road show where following a virtual event where we had a global audience of thousands of people that joined us, we went to six cities and decided to do an in-person only event in six of our top markets, which was really interesting and just kind of, you know, a different way to engage with a different set of people. And I think it's, it's just really interesting with all of the technology and, and opportunity that we have to bring people together, the decisions that people make and that we make as a, as a marketing team for um, using our platform and connecting with our audience. I head up our demand generation team and we do field marketing, we do in-person events, online events, we also sponsor events, and we did our first hybrid event in July of 2021, which was um, a lot, of, gave, gave us a lot of learnings that we can also kind of relate to our customers that use our platform. Yeah, what are some of those learnings? Hybrid events are not easy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's it's challenging, and I think that whenever you're thinking about what type of event makes sense for you and the experience that you're creating, you really need to consider, you know, what are your goals and what audience are you looking to connect with, and how and does a hybrid event make sense? Because a hybrid event is essentially 
um, it's going to be a larger spend, so you need to make sure that you have the budget, you need to make sure you have the resources in terms of staffing, and you really consider almost two separate experiences that could be happening simultaneously. And there's a lot of planning that's involved in that because um, the nuances of the attendee experience when they're joining you online are wildly different from someone that's joining you in person. And so thinking through all of the details, event organizers are very meticulous and very detail oriented. You have to really think about two completely separate experiences that are happening and it's a lot of work. And I know that a lot of people that have hosted their own hybrid event can empathize with that. Do you see hybrid events always being a part of the equation moving forward as more in person starts to happen more and more do you still think hybrid is going to be here for, for the long term? I think digital isn't going anywhere. Virtual events are here to stay. And that's definitely something that will continue well beyond the last couple of years. I think that hybrid isn't always the answer and it's not a one size fits all approach. There's a lot of different ways that you could approach hybrid based off of you know a variety of factors as it relates to what what type of event you're doing but i think that it's it's something that people should really really consider you know do you want to have a recording that you share after or not do you want to have an online audience that's there with you at the same time as what you're doing in person does that make sense and then if so what are the things that you need to really consider when it comes to someone that's tuning in from their computer versus someone that's with you and i mean something that we found is that content consumption is very different for the pace of an online event to feel right the content needs to be a little bit shorter so mm. if we did an in-person event we might have a panel conversation that goes 40 minutes with a q a but then online it really makes more sense to keep it to 20 to keep it punchy mm. so little things like that are, are important to consider and i don't think that everyone needs to do hybrid i do think that you know you need to think about what's the digital layer if any at your events that you're doing in person and what does that look like and what makes the most sense at what point do you feel like an unsuccessful event starts losing people especially these days it's interesting because so many people are hosting events right now i mean it's everyone's busy everyone's mm -hmm. you know whether you're traveling to an event or you know you're t attending something online it's it's really um, important to think about how you're going to capture someone's attention because people are excited to get back together in person they're excited to continue to attend things online i think that it's becoming very competitive to for someone to join you at your event you really have to think through how you're promoting it and why they should make that choice. People are being pickier and they're definitely being pickier about what they attend in person. We found that there's a 75% reduction in size for in-person events. Wow. And it's it's interesting because we've we've heard that from our clients, we've heard that from research, but we also have seen it ourselves. An event that, you know, maybe in any other circumstance might have had more significantly more people. We have to spend more time promoting it and give us a little bit more runway there because in order to hit our goals of the people that register and the people that join us in person, um, we have to, you know, take into consideration it is a lot harder to get people to come out. Is there a balance of kind of flow between this kind of keeping people entertained, but also educating people you want them engaged, but also not lose them? Have you find a, you know, a flow that works appropriate when it comes to education versus entertainment? Yeah, I think it's I think it's really important to think about the engagement with your audience as it relates to your content. And we we love opportunities through our virtual experiences like you would in, in person to um, get people excited about the event. And you mentioned entertainment. I think something that we found to be effective for an event that we're hosting. So if it's a summit or you know some sort of experience where people are able to join us globally online, we always think about the first three minutes and what type of entertainment or fun thing we can have to welcome people as they're logging in. And we love a DJ. I just think it's so fun to have a DJ set the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and people get excited and the chat fires up and, you know, it's it's a fun way to start and set the tone for an event. Um, and I think it's important to think of the element of entertainment as it, you know, comes to your entire content and programming. You know, does it make sense to have an MC you know, that kind of carries everyone through the event experience? And then from there, maybe you have a break where people can go network, but during the break, if people don't want to go to the networking area, one of the products that we acquired in 2021 is StreamYard, and they have kind of their own um, team within the Hopin organization that um, runs events and, and does things specific for our audience of users for StreamYard. And they had an acapella group that performed a mashup during the networking break. That's and perfect. Perfect. <laughs> it was amazing. I mean, I... <laughs> I loved that moment and I love networking. I think it's one of my favorite things of, not, of an online event um, that uses Hopin because I think it's a cool feature, but I didn't go to the networking because I was so 
<laughs> enamored with this acapella group that was performing. That's amazing. But that's, I mean, that's, that's the amazing. kind of thing that you talk about. Like you, right. but then, you, you know, you're telling your friends, you're telling your family, oh, this was a really cool thing and experience that I went to. And one of our customers, um, her name is Jess. She's with Broadway Unlocked. And they're an agency that has a lot of really amazing clients that do really cool things. But she, she's said that they take the approach, like it's not just, you know, an online event, it's a show. And you want to think about mm. it as a show. And how do you, you know, that, that's really important when it comes to engagement and the attendee experience. That's huge. I love that. And I, I'd love to start to see some of these older, larger enterprise businesses that, you know, that can, that, you know, that have the, the resources and ability to do this, but to take some time to make it a show. Cause sometimes some of the content is so stale and old, you lose people and, and um, I love the yeah, that if you just think of it, how can we make this an actual production? Like, how can yeah. we create something special? That's yeah. great. In terms of just like growth in the industry, do you see a lot of room for growth moving forward? Like, what are you kind of observing now that you've been in the game? Yeah, I think that there's there's constantly new technology that's coming up that helps solve the problem of you know creating connections and and helping people connect in a meaningful way. And I think that we're going to continue to see that innovation. That's not that's not going anywhere. Something that I love um, that Hopin allows well beyond our product. Our product has a lot of really great tools that event organizers can use for their events, but we have a lot of integrations with partners that take it a step further that can really add to the level of collaboration that you're allowing attendees to employ the, you know, engagement tactics, gamification. We have over 40 applications in our newly launched app store and Oh wow. Yeah, and it's 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 cool because it's like our, our technology does a lot of great things, but there's a lot of other companies that are doing very specific, awesome things that event organizers can now use and plug into their event and make it an even even better experience. And something that I also think is really interesting that we talk about a lot at Hopin is accessibility. And you inherently are going to have a more accessible event when you do it online, just because of the fact that people don't have to be there in person. So when you have an online event, you might have thousands of people that attend from all over the world versus if they have happen to be in Austin and you know able to travel or they live there. Accessibility is something that every event organizer should take into account based off of what community and what audience that they are looking to to bring together. Um, and you know accessibility means taking disabilities into consideration, taking language translations into account. We had an event um, in March that it was a an online event and we partnered with Kudo, which is one of our integration partners and they translate um you, you have all sorts of options with them and how many translations you need based off of your audience but we had five languages that we translated our entire wow. event into we also had american sign language and so it was so cool seeing the speakers on a panel and then seeing that translated live for our audience into asl so with Hopin, we have native closed captioning within our product and it's AI, so it's never completely accurate, but you can employ closed captioning. You can toggle it on or off, depending on if you want to use it for any of our events that organizers are using us for. We um, also have the option to integrate with one of the platforms that does live captioning. So Sync Words is actually uh, a company that we integrated with for our event where a human captioner was having, um, was translating everything into the captioning and we had that um, you know, extra level of accuracy, which was really nice. So there's just a lot of, there's a lot of really cool things that are out there that people can, can leverage based off of what kind of event they're doing. Um, another one that I love is Miro, the whiteboarding tool. So the way that you would, if you were at a conference, um, you know, with a, an actual whiteboard, you can whiteboard through Miro online. And I think that that's another just cool example of the innovation and cool things that you can do online. It's amazing. And the technology, like did you said, I mean, there's so much, there's so much coming out that's here now. That's just wild. It makes, it's, it makes events so much more magical. Yeah. Um, on the, there was an article, it was around remote interpreting, uh, that they can, they can really take hybrid events to global heights was the title. This author writes about the importance of having interpretation for a potentially global audience at a virtual event and focuses on this company called in, in, Intrepify as a solution. Interpify, yeah. yeah Interpify, yeah. yeah. He talks about the importance of providing, also providing closed captioning. Question is, doesn't Hopin allow for the integration of in Interpify on their platform? Yeah, it's a part of our app store. It's a, okay. it's a really, really great tool. Um, and I, I just think it's so great that you can have an event that a glo truly global audience can attend when you use platforms like theirs to make it accessible with, with languages. That's amazing. The necessity and the importance is, is awesome. That's, that's great. 
Um, there was another article. It says Peloton races to revitalize brand with help of star instructors. Uh, the summary, basically, according to the author, is that Peloton is adjusting its marketing focus to use in-house instructors uh, in an ad campaign. Do you think this sort of strategy will work to draw people in? Yeah, I mean, I think that Peloton is such an amazing company for so many reasons. I think that also the experience, it was almost a version of hybrid events, going to a Peloton studio and taking a class. I took their um, one of their tread classes in New York, and it was so interesting because with the cameras and everything, the instructor was really catering to the online audience, but you know, here we are in person and <laughs> also taking the class. So it's just like an, an interesting, different type of hybrid event. Um, they, they do their homecoming event now virtually, and that actually used to be in person in New York, and now it's a global event that people can attend from all over the world. And it's just, it's been really cool to see the impact that homecoming has had um, for them just in terms of like a marketing event that is totally wildly different than it was a few years ago when it was just for, mm. for people in New York. But um, they have such a great community. And I think that the way that they engage with their community is really, really interesting. I think that the instructors are, um, they're, they're just, they're so loved and revered. And I, I love asking people, oh, who's your favorite instructor? And everyone right. will give you a different answer. <laughs> um, but I think, you know, you, leveraging their instructors when it comes to engaging with their community is just so smart because people people are very loyal to the Peloton brand. And I think that their community is just um, really special. And I think that they do a lot of really interesting things when it comes to engaging with them. I love it. We, we had um, Don McGuire, CMO for Qualcomm, in the studio here about a month or so ago. And he is another one of the huge fans, loves Peloton, daily writer. Um, so shout out to you, Don. And Peloton, we haven't interviewed Peloton yet. We need to talk to someone on their marketing side. We, they're, they're one brand that we need to get on the show. Uh, but we, we hear about them a lot. So Peloton, we're coming for you. Um, cool. Well, let's get into the lightning round questions, Brianna. These are kind of some fun questions. And you ready? Yep, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, uh, Salesforce Marketing Trends. This whole podcast is brought to you by Salesforce. So when you want to learn about marketing and engagement, head over to salesforce.com forward slash marketing. First question, Brianna, last time you tried something new? Um, I I love trying things that are new. I like to extend myself. Um, you know, I, I think Lululemon has do something once a day that scares you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Um, I, I, I'm in Puerto Rico today and that was new. I had never been to Puerto Rico and it was a last minute trip, but I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. <laughs> okay. And I, I've met a lot of great people and it's, you know, people are excited to, to be in person and be in Puerto Rico this week. Awesome. What is a life lesson you learned the hard way? Oh, that's such a good question. I think that something that a lot of event organizers especially have learned over the last couple of years is how important it is to be flexible and I'm a planner and I know that a lot of marketers are, and I think it's really important to um, you know, be detail oriented and have a plan in place. But when things go wrong, um, you know, you have to be able to be flexible. And I think that um, that that can be hard for some people based off of their inherent personality. But I definitely have learned over this past year um, the hard way that, you know, being flexible is really, really important right now. And um, it's something that I've just had to kind of incorporate into the way that I operate. I love that one too. What's an activity that makes you lose track of time? Um, lately, I've been really into pickleball. <laughs> okay. It's huge here in Austin, by the way. A lot of our friends are playing this all the time, all the time. Yeah. I had a friend that did a tournament for her birthday party in, in the Bay Area. And actually at this conference that I'm attending, one of the activations in the expo hall floor is a pickleball court. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's the most engaging thing that I've seen at a conference. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Oh man. Okay. If, would you rather lose all of your old memories or never be able to make new ones? That's a really hard one. I love memories and I, um, I not, not to say that I live in the past, but I just think memories are really special. Oh, wow. That's hard. That's a really tough <laughs> I know, one. Right? Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to lose my memories. I, I, I've been fortunate enough to have an amazing experience <laughs> with life and I, I would like Indeed. to keep, keep, keep my memories. <laughs> okay. All right. That's a fair answer. Um, what's something you're maybe personally betting on for the future? I'm, and I know Hoppin is betting on, you know, events are never going to be the same. We're returning to in-person, but we're not returning to the pre-pandemic past. And it's exciting. And I think that while we, you know, can't wait to be gathering in person more frequently and that being um, the new way forward, events will never ch will never be the same. They're forever changed, which is which is also just really exciting to be in the industry right now. 
What is something that impresses you? Thoughtfulness impresses me. I think that um, marketers are talking a lot about personalization now, mm -hmm. and it's really important to get that right. Being thoughtful in your day to day, whether it's your relationships, your family, your friends, um, but also the way that you you know think about marketing your brand, I think it's really important to be thoughtful. If you had access to a time machine, where and when would you go? I would hopefully have access to the DeLorean from Back to the Future because <laughs> that's my favorite movie. And <laughs> well said, well said indeed. Um, I would go to the twenties. I think that I just think the okay. Roaring Twenties in Europe. Like I just I think that that's a really interesting time and place. Um, in the DeLorean, of course. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll take it. Um, what is success for you? I think success is, you know, driving impact. I think that on our marketing team, we're always thinking about how we can be most impactful. And um, I think that that's also, you know, something, it's, it's something that's an inherent value within Hopin is, is, you know, being impactful with your time. And, you know, we, we as a company want our customers to find success with the experiences that they're creating. And so that makes us a success. So we really, we really care about championing our customers and making sure that they have um, a really successful event themselves because um, that's what we're here to do. We're here to help enable them to, you know, be the best at their jobs and create a really amazing, magical experience. So success is really, you know, just driving that impact and really thinking about our customers. What is your favorite app on your phone? My favorite app, so my phone is actually all color coordinated. So it's like by um, <laughs> the wow. reds and the oranges and just because aesthetically it looks great, but it's also very hard to find things. <laughs> I actually, I use the Yelp app all the time. I, okay. I, I worked there and so I feel an affinity to the, the company and the brand, but um, I, love, I love getting recommendations when traveling and I think that Yelp's a really great way to do that. What is the skill that you believe everyone should have? I think that everyone should be able to create connections, um, authentic connections. I think authenticity is really important and it is an, a, a sort of skill. Um, you see it with networking, you see it with, you know, any, anytime you have the opportunity to meet someone, it could be an opportunity that um, you wouldn't expect. And so I think authentic um, connecting and networking is something that's important for people to develop. That's great. That's great. If you could effortlessly pick up a new skill in an instant, what would it be? I wish I could play an instrument. I have a lot of friends that have these amazing talents where you'll be at a dinner party and they'll just get on the piano. <laughs> um, I've thought about taking piano lessons for the first time since the eighth grade recently, but I just think I nice. think it's so neat when someone, one of my colleagues, um, her name's Andy, she's a flautist and she is an Ooh. amazing, amazing flute player. And so I just, I think that that's really cool. I think that um, I love the idea of always learning and I, I love, you know, the language apps that you can have on your phone to learn a new language. I've been, I've been practicing my Spanish lately. Um, but I would love, I would love to pick up playing an instrument. It takes a lot of time and a lot of practice, but I wish I could. Okay. <laughs> All right. Last question. What's one thing that you'd like to do this year that you've never done before? It's a, it's such a good question. <laughs> Travel anywhere, jump out of a plane. I don't know anything exciting, adventurous or... Maybe not. I have jumped out of a plane before, so I can't even do that one. Okay. But. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you're in Puerto Rico. You're doing big things. I feel like what's a, what's a, what's something you could scratch off your list this year that you've never done before? We are doing a road show in Europe this summer, and so Ooh. we'll be going to London and Berlin and um, Amsterdam and Paris. Ooh. And yeah, sign me up. Yeah, and so which is great, and we have. Um, such a great audience in our European markets. We're really excited to, to do an event over there now that we've done a few events that have been in North America. But I'm trying to find, you know, during the the two days in between over the weekend in between Berlin and Amsterdam, you know, somewhere somewhere new and exciting to go. So uh, my colleague and I are gonna are gonna find find a new place that neither of us have been and go there together. Okay. Perfect. I love it. Awesome. Well, Brianna, thank you so much for being on the show. This was, this was a great conversation and and congratulations on the momentum around Hopin. I mean, it's clear that, like you said, events and anything anything event related, you think Hopin. And so congrats on that. Thank you for being on the show. This was amazing. Have an awesome rest of your day. Thanks, Jeremy. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for more great marketing interviews with today's top industry leaders. And thank you to our partners at Salesforce. Salesforce brings marketing and engagement together. Head over to salesforce.com forward slash marketing.